what's up everybody hope you've been having it good if not try to make it better but today we are going to be repairing a clutch sprocket drum some people call it a sprocket because it has a sprocket on it some people call it a drum or clutch all right so that's what we're getting at basically what this one is doing is whenever you go to spin the chain it starts to smoke right here and it doesn't really want to turn it turns fine at first but start using it for a second or two and it starts to smoke right here and it doesn't really want to turn so what that's caused is that bearing right there inside that kit is gone bad something between that and this and it's probably dirt i'm really bad i'm really bad about getting dirt in my my chainsaws because i'm clearing some land and the bulldozer piled them all up together and I got to cut that stuff out of the dirt and it's just a mess. So probably getting more dirt than I should. I'm gonna be using some um, carburetor body cleaner, WD-40. This is just mainly to clean stuff up. Your chainsaw wrench that comes with your chainsaw, a bigger screwdriver and a nice little three pound hammer. You're gonna need some kind of cord. It doesn't really matter the cord, just something a little thicker, right? But not too thick. It needs to be on the thinner side. That's just some old fishing twine. I make um, my hoop nets and trot lines and stuff out of. I got a pair of rubber gloves. Let's get to this, people. First thing you want to do is you want to remove one, two, three screws, right? And that way you can take off the cover. So your first step, your first aim of attack on this is to um, remove the spark plug. I've already had them loose. You, you can loosen them with your wrench. So you basically, you just it's, it's not rocket science. You just you put it in there and you turn. Do each one until you get it done. And then what you have to do when it kind of popped up, you got to pop them up the rest of the way. All right. I'm going to talk about this guy. This is a decompression switch, right? And it should whenever it's running pop up if it doesn't you got to replace it you can use this guy right here to replace it just put it in there turn it boom good to go well we're gonna be doing the spark plug today because we got to get into that housing because what we got to do what we got to do is stop the piston from moving and that's what we're doing here while we're removing the spark plug to do a clutch is we got to stop the piston for moving now you can use a metal tool there's a tool for it it's actually a metal tool but it can dent your piston cord simple it's an old old technique you double it over that's what i do i mean as long as you get it done it doesn't matter but this is how i do it right if you don't like doing it this way then don't do it do it your way you just fill up the cavity just keep push a bunch of it in there i don't like to use the end because the end sometimes has that little burnt part on it and you can get trash in there if you use the middle of the cord you don't have all that trash. And I just kind of fill that up with some cord. Doesn't have to be tons of it. I don't even take it off the spool. You see it's still on the spool. Shove some down in there. It doesn't have to be a, a ton, just needs to be enough. All right, take your tool. That's for your spark plug. Big ends for a spark plug, small end is for your decompression switch and your brake cover. Now, when you do your brake cover, make sure it's pulled to you. Okay, see, if it's pulled out here, because you have to pull it out there to get the cover off, but you wanna make sure you pull this back to you, relock it before you take your brake off. If not, you're gonna have a pain in, oh, it's gonna be horrible. It's gonna be horrible trying to get that back on. So make sure that you have that in the correct position so that way you don't give yourself a hard time when you go to put it back together. All right, we're gonna get this off. Now I do, yeah, you can go to Amazon and a bunch of other places to get like this kit. But I'm gonna show you the part number I'm using, right? I actually using a, I got this from a Husqvarna dealer. I probably paid more than I could have done online. But this guy gives me a pretty good deal. It's $36.38. 
and but i know it's an actual good husqvarna part i know it's gonna last me some time i have issues with aftermarket parts especially in the barons of them just going bad and I, i'm putting this thing through hell so for 40 bucks but basically i can make sure i get a good quality Hus husqvarna part and i support a local business in the area people forget about that support these local businesses you know support them they love you you love them that, that's the kind of attitude you need to have about local business and I, I try to do that. Why well, I say 10 bucks, right? What's $10? That local business guy needs my money. Let me show you what the kit comes with. I'm gonna talk about why I got it the way I got it. Okay. All this kit comes with is that Baron and that drum. It does not come with this guy right here. Okay. So you're gonna have to actually get save that piece. That piece don't go bad. Why buy that piece? We're gonna remove, we're just gonna, just for safety reasons, we're just gonna get the chain off there. That's a new chain, that chain is sharp as hell. I only cut down one, one small tree with it. Okay. Now, before I get going any further on this, on this ordeal, especially with this right here, what I want to do is I want to get my carburetor cleaner out and I just want to clean all that up. And you people might say, hey, why are you doing that on that? Well, it won't hurt it. It does need to be cleaned up. Might as well do a little maintenance while I'm out of here, right? So I'm not putting it back into a dirty unit. And this is just really the lazy way of doing this. I do take a toothbrush when I, when I'm out there in the field chainsaw and I have a toothbrush, I keep some toothbrushes in my glove box. Like Ken's done. And you can get the rest of that crap out using double D 40. The nice thing about WD-40, you know why they call it double D-40, right? Water displacement and took the guy 40 tries to make it, okay? That's why they call it that. It dissipates over time. It's made to spray onto electrical boxes or anywhere that you just want to get grime or water out of, and it, it'll dissipate out. So it won't stay around long. It's not like an, it's not an oil. It's not a lubricant. They call it a lubricant. It's, it's not a lubricant. It don't... Okay, well, that's a good deal cleaner. Not beautiful. I mean, them it's a chainsaw. All right. Okay, so I turn it and you feel that it locked in place. Now you got two notches on here. Let's get you a close up of this, okay? So you can see what I'm talking about. See, it says off and you can read it now, off. So you're gonna put you a, um, your hammer and that's how you, that's where you're gonna hit it, okay? And now you don't have to be crazy with this because you know you don't want to mess your chainsaw up but you got to be a little forceful with it now it is a, it is a tool let me do this Keep working at it. There you go. See how it's spinning off now? So it seemed a little crazy than what it was. And for any reason, if this thing spins and doesn't come off, that means you don't have enough cord in your piston because your piston's still going up and down. Get some more. Save this piece. This piece, there's nothing wrong with that piece. That piece is good. So we're going to save that piece, save us a little money. We're going to pull this piece off. 
Look at that. That bearing is shot. Fuck. There we go. Let's get all that. You want to clean this up as much as you can. You don't want to leave all that gump in there. So you can get, get them out the package. There you are right there. Look at there. Look at there. Nice, new. Wow, that one's oval a little bit. They smushed it in the package. Clock suckers. That's okay. If it is a little oval like that, don't worry about it. It's, it's actually a little bit soft, so it'll go right in. Then you're just going to take this guy. Now, this guy does have these lines. You see how it has little notches? Those little notches correspond to this right here on there. So line them up. And that's, there you go. There's your replacement. I mean, and honestly, this one's not in bad, bad, too bad. I thought it was worse shape than that. It's really not. I may try to re-oil and reinsert if this one goes bad to redo it. Probably just had a lot of grime in there. You see how much grime I had in there? Look at there. Let me take that one out. That sprocket looks different, don't it? Interesting. Huh, I wonder why that sprocket's different like that. You see the difference between them? Hmm, interesting. Who knows? I'll hold on to it just in case. I like holding on to things. I'll put it back in the bag. All right. So, how to tighten this up. I'm going to show you how my trick to tighten this up. I abuse WD-40. I mean, literally abuse it. Use it for everything. While I'm banging it up against something is to get any dirt out of there. Getting it good and cleaned up, you know? You want it as clean as possible. It's threaded, so you just thread it on. Counterclockwise, Riley. Counterclockwise. Okay. Don't worry about getting it on there tight. You don't have to get it on there tight. Don't 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 even be concerned with that crap. You can pull your cord out, okay? Pull your cord out, your cord's good. Put your spark plug back in. Because you want to put that in as soon as possible. The other important thing, when you go to tighten your spark plug back up, you just need, you just need it tight. You don't have to go crazy on it, right? You don't, you don't have to go crazy. I got it a little better than snug, you know? A quarter turn past snug where it's just good and tight. You know, I'm sure there's a proper torque. Somebody's gonna tell me the exact torque rating that you have to have it. Well, I'm sorry. I ain't using torque wrench today. Guess too bad for my chainsaw. Clean that lid out. good I'm gonna let that dry for a minute WD-40 on there boy 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 I spoke that I got that hot didn't I still works though 20 inch blade bar I mean 20 inch bar With a 72 tooth chain blade, that's the wrong way. It's clearly the wrong way. So just put it all back together like normal. Just like, just like that. Fit them in there, get as tight as you can.
Let me clean that up some. I'll be right back. Take it over to the old water hose. I'm gonna take the other part there too. All right, we got everything nice, clean, and dry. Even got a yingling. So we have that, which is cover, top cover, and we have the brake cover. So let's put the brake cover back on. That's where we're at. The reason why we wanted to make sure that was in the back position was because that trips this part of the brake. And if you don't have it in that position, then it makes it very hard to put this back on because this band is tight and you can't get the band back on here. So you have to trip that backwards. You don't want to do that. It's not easily done. I thought about making a video doing it. Then I got mad because I couldn't get the trip back. So I quit making the video. So I just give you an idea. I have got it in the wrong position before. Just being tired, getting my chain off. You know, it, it rolled off the bar and it's upsetting to say the least because you're really hot and tired it's middle of summer i'm in louisiana it's really hot here it's severely hot so at first i'm just going to get them uh, reasonably tight because all i'm going to do what i'm doing what i'm trying to do here is tighten tighten that part i just came on because it's not tight i'm going to show you how to tighten that part it's what we're doing here now and so it seems like that's tight, but that's not tight. What's gonna happen is when the first time I spin it, you're gonna see the slack in this. But we're not too worried about that at the moment. All right, let's get this cover back on. And when you tighten these down, don't over tighten them. Just, just, they just need to be barely tight. Just, just on nicely, you know? They're, they're made to be hand taut, not just going all in and cranking down on them. You're gonna end up breaking your cover. Remember this thing heats up, but when everything heats up, it swells up. And if you have it on there too tight, you'll crack your, you'll crack your cover. All right, so this is what you'll do. Let's get some gasoline in there, okay. So that's why you don't ever want to put it on super, super tight because it's going to be a little tighter and the first time you spin it, it's going to loosen up. Well, that that went well, didn't it? All right, guys. I'm excited about that. Like and subscribe, and as always, have a great rest of your day.